Hey everyone, in a previous video I completely rebuilt the lathe's cross slide to add some T-slots. Today I want to show you what these T-slots can make the lathe capable of. My plan is to add a milling attachment, and I'm not talking about adding a compound slide vertically with the vise attached and using the lathe as a sort of makeshift mill. I'm talking about adding a vertical axis with a spindle, kind of similar to those lathe mill combos that you might see. Now thankfully doing this was pretty easy because I already had a CNC controlled vertical slide that I made for my shirt line about a year and a half ago, so I'll quickly recap how I made it. I went and bought some decent linear rails on the internet and I mounted them to a piece of 3 quarter inch aluminium. Despite not being a proper name brand kit, the linear rails and ball screws work really great for the price that I paid. Now for some reason that I still haven't figured out, the linear rails and the ball screws weren't at the same height, so I had to machine some standoffs in order to take them to the right height. Once that's done, I can screw on a piece of aluminium plate onto which we can then mount the 400 watt spindle. At the top, I'll also attach a bracket for the stepper motor. Now normally, I'd screw the assembly to this base plate, but there's a few things I need to do first before I can do that. Firstly, I want to clean up this edge. It was all cut by hand at the time using a hacksaw and an angle grinder, and I didn't have a mill to clean up the edge. So I'll quickly use the fly cutter to clean it up. Next we need to drill a hole pattern to screw into the T-nuts. I'll be making a square hole pattern so I can mount the attachment either parallel or perpendicular to the cross slide. Now I must admit, I didn't plan in advance on actually cutting this aluminium, so actually fixturing this to the mill table was a bit of a challenge because it really was oversized. I eventually settled on drilling the holes over the T-slots and using the bolt holes to clamp the work in place. At best, this is a pretty dodgy method, but it did work out well in the end, though in the future, I would really want to avoid doing this. With the holes drilled, we can mount the assembly to the base, and we can also bolt on some right angled brackets for extra rigidity. We can now attach it to the lathe's cross slide. We'll also wire up the DC motor. Unfortunately though, I couldn't get the stepper motor controller to actually work. Maybe it's having a bit of a bad day, so in the meantime, I'm going to replace it with a temporary hand wheel. And there we have it, a DIY lathe mill combo. 
Now I know you're going to be asking, why did I do this when I already had a perfectly good milling machine? Well the simple answer is, this setup works exactly like a rotary table, except I didn't have to go out and buy one. I just used what I already had here in the workshop. This setup is great because I can easily hold round stock, machine it, drill it and index it. Now obviously if slash when I buy a rotary table, all of that will make this whole setup, well, completely obsolete. But until then, this setup is going to be pretty useful for me. And looking at the prices of rotary tables, I'm probably going to stick to using this for a while. Now I think the best thing that I can do is jump on and see what I can actually do on this. Not exactly liking the sound of that. Sure, it's making chips, but the surface finish looks pretty awful. I'm probably getting the tool geometry pretty wrong here, so I'll probably have to come back and revisit it at a later date. Well that's a step in the right direction, it cut that slot pretty well. I gotta say, it will probably make a pretty decent keyway cutter, at least for short pieces under say 80mm long. Now what I just demonstrated was a big advantage. I was able to index the part, pretty much rotate it, and I squared off the end. I was just doing that by hand, it's square-ish. I'll need to find a better way of dividing it and maybe locking the spindle in the future, but it looks pretty promising. With this method, I can probably make D-shafts or hex bolts, or maybe even gears in the future. Well, I gotta say, I'm pretty impressed with that. If you want to make a whole pattern like the one I just did, a setup like this can be really advantageous and useful. Now, I haven't explored the full capabilities of this attachment yet. There is a lot more to come out of it, but I'm gonna leave it there. I hope you really enjoyed watching this. I hope you learned something. And with that, thank you very much for watching. See you next time.